for yeah, more okay. on the security challenges facing Europe, we are joined by Thomas Clough, like a European policy analyst. Uh, Mr. Clough, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, let me just start off by asking you about whether you think European countries are doing enough to fight extremists, essentially living right in their communities. Uh, well, of course, in the light of what's happened today in Brussels and what's happened in the last uh, uh, in the last years, really all over Europe, you could argue that it's not enough. Uh, and certainly in Brussels, there has been a problem in that uh, uh, the uh, the spread of Salafi extreme Salafist ideology uh, through mosques and 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 parts of the Islamic communities hasn't been hasn't been observed closely enough and hasn't been counteracted early enough. And um, and what happened uh, in Brussels today uh, is a further wake-up call to Europeans to take the threat of uh, uh, a radicalization of parts of the Muslim community seriously and to address the root causes. And one of them, of course, is the ex exportation of the most aggressive form of puritanical Islam from Saudi Arabia, Wahhabi Islam. So, uh, given what you just said, do you think that especially smaller European countries have the tools that they need to stop these kind of attacks? Well, what we need in Europe, of course, is a much closer cooperation between the security services uh, of the various European member states. I mean, all security services, even within certain countries, are famously reluctant to cooperate uh, amongst each other. We've seen that. We had that problem, I think. Uh, in the United States before 9-11 between the FBI and the CIA. You've got similar problems in each member state and, of course, in the union with 20, 28 member states, which is still far from having a real federal, if you like, uh, federal uh, authorities, uh, fully formed federal structures in terms of policing, Europol, uh, the uh, Europe's answer uh, to a fledgling answer to America's FBI as a first step. We're still far from where we need to be to combat a terrorist phenomenon, which is not only European, of course, but uh, you could argue global in scope today. So given those challenges, how do you think that cooperation can be improved, cooperation and communication? Well, a big, a big, a big step that is needed is a culture change, uh, culture change within uh, within the uh, the public authorities, within the governments, amongst between the governments of the European Union. I think there has to be a readiness for a real transfer of sovereignty, of power, of executive power, of investigative power, uh, to common, uh, a, a, a beefed up Europol, if you like, a European answer to America's FBI. Uh, and beyond that, of course, uh, a twin policy of uh, uh, spending money, uh, spending energy, effort, and devoting attention to what is going on in the Muslim community so as to uh, identify uh, those members, those few members in terms of percentage uh, of the population uh, uh, and indeed of the population at large because we see Muslim converts uh, adhering to the, uh, the radical ideology who sort of cross over the line from, if you like, non-immigrant families. Uh, we need much more, much more attention spent on that, but we also need many more measures to uh, facilitate the uh, integration of, uh, of, of young second or third generation migrants into our economies. Structural high unemployment is a huge problem in some parts of Europe. It's a huge problem in uh, the more disenfranchised, the poorer parts of Brussels. You've got as many as 50 percent of the of young uh, young young men and women, men in particular in immigrant neighborhoods, out of the uh, locked out of the labor market, um, and 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 that of course is one of the causes which facilitate and fuel the radicalization of a small minority of those. Uh, some of the things that you're spelling out, though, seem to be awfully ambitious goals. What do you think the reality is as far as European countries having any kind of policy changes uh, to try and fight some of these extremists? I mean, do you foresee any major change based on what's happened, for instance, in Belgium? I think every, if you like, every further atrocity that's happened uh, in Europe uh, and of course starting if you like outside Europe with 9-11 has been a further uh, a further wake-up call uh, and none of which in itself has been sufficient so far. I think when you look at the history of terrorism overall you know terrorism is an old phenomenon in the world look at the uh, and in Europe uh, there was major terrorism in the late 19th uh, and early 20th century when anarchists inspired often by Russian uh, theory uh, Russian radical theory went around murdering presidents and uh, and and the emperors of Austria and indeed American presidents have been murdered several of them in the 19th century as we very well know 
Um, and, uh, and, and if you look at the lifespan of terrorist movements, um, sadly, uh, history teaches us they often last a generation, 30 years, uh, and sometimes longer than that. Um, so I think uh, what we have to not accept, that's the wrong word, but what we've got to realize is that this is not a problem which will be solved through whatever we measure we take in, in a short-term or immediate way. Sadly, our societies are going to have to both fight it and learn to live with it without jettisoning our values, uh, without panicking, uh, and, uh, and, and remembering that, for instance, if you take the case of the US, far more people, infinitely more people die by non-terrorist gun violence than um, have died so far by the terrorist attacks combined in the US as, at as atrocious as they are. So yes, it's awful, it's painful, but it's important at the same time not to panic. All right, Thomas Clough, thank you so much for your perspective. Appreciate it.